So you know that story in the Bible where God tells Abraham to kill his son? It sort of comes up from time to time when we want to be pro-life, and we, we should be able to address that. Um, it's a hard story. It's a hard story because if God spoke to me from the clouds and said, you know what, kill your firstborn son, I would say no. I'm just not a not a flex, not a I no. I'm a I can't. It, it, it's like it, it hurts to think about. It's uncomfortable for Christians to sort of reckon uh, uh, with a God who would call for that kind of death with a God who says he loves us and wants to take care of us uh, because I would never do that to my kid. Um, but here's the thing. What if we told the story about Abraham from, I don't know, Sarah's perspective? So what if there was this uh, this husband who um, he, he gave his wife up to be molested by somebody for his own safety, not once, but but twice. Uh, he was so desperate to have children that he got the maid pregnant. Um, he, he made his wife feel so bad about it that she even went along with it and kind of even sort of suggested it. She was so eager to, to give him this thing that he wanted. If you tell the story from Sarah's perspective, the whole thing actually sounds kind of abusive. Um, Abraham is a sinner. It, it says the only thing that makes him righteous before God is he believed and it was counted to him as righteous, that that Abraham trusted God and faith alone justified him, despite the fact that he had lots, lots, lots of sins. So here's the thing. These sins break stuff. They really do actually compound misery and despair and death and decay. Uh, what if the sacrifice of Isaac, like, honestly, if there was this kind of monster out there, should he be reproducing? You, you get to actually ask these questions about him as a sinner. You recognize then that the law demands more than we can give. The law that actually calls us to perfection, it demands more than we can give. And the consequences from it are more than we are willing to pay. The law is pure. It is good. It is holy. And it's actually how things are supposed to be. When we find ourselves in this world, despite all of our good excuses and justifications and ways that we explain away all the things that we do wrong, sin still breaks stuff. And that's a price that we can't pay. So even though the law demands more than we can give, the gospel provides everything that the law demands. Abraham knows this. Even as he goes up the mountain, he says, we will return to you, me and my son. I don't understand how it's going to happen. I am not really enjoying this whole thing, but I know that God has promised that this is going to be the kid. And that means that if God has to raise him from the dead, he will do it. My sin needs covered. Lord have mercy, but he does. I trust so much in this that I will, I will go up that mountain. And the Lord provides on the Mount of Moriah. That means the Lord provides. He offers up a, um, a kind of a, a, a a lamb, a, a ram, a, a, an animal that will take away the sin of the world wearing a crown of thorns. The, the ram is caught in the thicket by its horns and here it is sacrificed in the stead of sinners who have both sinned and been sinned against that they could go home together. Jesus covers all of our sin. He goes where we cannot, where we are unable and unwilling to pay the price. Our Lord goes willingly to bleed and to die for you and for me to unite us in a way that sin would otherwise leave us separated, to offer us peace and life together that doesn't just exist in this world, but eternally. The story of Abraham and Isaac, is, it's a painful one, but it's a recognition that God provides everything that the law demands, even if the law is too much for us to pay. Thanks be to God for Christ Jesus, our Lord.